talk for a moment about the outer product and the inner product and the cross product. And I might be able to relate some of these things to the Maxwell's field equations. This guy over here is called a nabla, and the nabla is basically a, something that consists of del del x, del del y, and del del z. It's a vector, but it's not like a vector of numbers, it's a vector of de derivatives. It's a, it's a uh, operator vector. And uh, this e over here, I can write that like e sub x, e sub y, e sub z, it is also a vector. It represents the uh, component of the electric field going in the x direction, the component of the electric field going in the y direction, the component of the electric field going in the z direction. Now there's two forms of an electric field. One um, is newtons per coulomb, and the other one is volts per meter. Um, this one is joules per, joules per coulomb per meter. This one is also joules per coulomb per meter. And what they both do is basically convert to kilogram meter per second squared per coulomb. So basically there's a Euclidean directionality to that electric field. So there's, that is what is, what is represented by e sub x, e sub y, and e sub z. Um, second squared, I'm not sure if there's any kind of velocity, um, maybe an acceleration vector that would uh, have some effect on time that might come into play uh, in special relativity. I'm not sure exactly how, though. Right now I want to focus on how to multiply this out to see the outer product. The outer product is not going to be a scalar, it's going to be a great big thing consisting of a del e sub x, del x, del e sub y, del x, del e sub z, del x, del e sub x, del y, del e sub y, del y, del e sub z, del y, del e sub x, e sub y, e sub z, del z. All right, now I'm gonna do something over here with a little bit of a, some arrows. I'm gonna represent a right-handed coordinate system with x going this way, uh, y going this way into the page, and z coming up this way, x, y, z, and so What's going to happen with this del e sub x del x is going to be e sub x is going to come to the right and del x is also going to come to the right. How about del e sub y del x? The e sub y comes this way and then del x comes that way. Um, e sub z del x, I'm going to picture that coming, del e sub x coming that way, del x coming that way. How about del e sub x del y? e sub x comes this way, del y comes that way. e sub y del, oops, I've got to work, falling asleep at the wheel here. Um, del e sub y del y. Del e sub z del y is going like that, and del e sub x del z is going up like that. Del e sub y um, del z is coming up like that. Um, del e sub z, del z is both coming straight up. Okay, that's not completely clear, but maybe if I draw a little cube in here with each one, that'll make it a little better. Okay, while we were paused, I drew in a, little, a bunch of little cubes on each of those. 
And what I'm going to think about on each of these guys, I'm going to imagine which way, if I pointed my, if I wrapped my fingers on my right hand in that direction, which way would my thumb be pointing? So I'm going to be pointing pointing that way here. Um, but my thumb would be pointed that way here. Um, here, my thumb would be pointed that that way. If I wrap my if I wrap my right fingers that way, uh, here it's that way. And here, the uh, thumb would be pointed that way. Oops. Here, my thumb would be pointed that way. Have I got them all? Okay. So basically, we got um, some of them have the the point of my thumb going inside the box. So we'll call this one the ones where it's inside the box. We'll call it plus. And the one where it's pointed outside the box, we'll call it minus. And notice how these kind of these two are kind of similar. This one goes around. Uh, the bottom of the box. This one goes around the bottom of the box. So these two are kind of associated, right? Um, and you can also see that by the e, y and the x and the x and the y here. Um, there's also, uh, this one's going around the box, the front of the box, and it's going to be a minus. And this one is going around the front of the box the other way, uh, but it's the arrow points inside the box, so it's going to be a plus. And then this one, we've got the arrow going inside the box. It's going to be a plus. And this one is going to go outside outside the box. It's going to be a minus. So I'm going to go ahead and put those plus and minus signs over here. A minus right there and a minus right there, basically. And essentially, what we're going to imagine is that the positive sign of this thing contributes to a, a, a right thumb in the Z direction. So I'm going to actually, you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to invent a new notational symbol um, called sum. And I'm going to put the sum in the box, and it just means what it means is I'm going to take everything here and multiply it by everything in a similarly sized box, and just multiply everything together, and uh, and uh, get those answers. And what I'm going to put in here is a i sub z, or maybe just a z with a a little cap over a Z hat, something that looks like a Z hat, and then up here, negative Z hat. Down here, negative. Remember the X, X Y. This is the negative Y hat, and this is the Y hat, and this is the Y Z X. So, so I'll have an X hat and a negative x hat right here. And this is um, del cross e. And it comes out with those zeros in there. It cancels out everything in there. Um, del cross e is the z component, z hat, times the uh, del e sub x del y. minus del e sub y del x, del e sub y del x. And we're going to add, um, say, y hat. And it's going to be del e sub x del x minus del e sub x del z. And then we'll take that plus uh, our x hat times del e sub y del z minus 
uh, del e sub z del y. Now, I don't think that I actually told you much new in this in this uh, thing, except uh, this idea here of recognizing the order that things are being done. That you have first the e sub y and then the e sub and then the del x gives you a um, a left-handed uh, sense. Going e sub z then del x gives you a right-handed sense. And how this left-handed sense cancels out with the right-handed sense to, uh, to explain why um, this cross product leads to um, positive and minus signs. Now the reason I'm making this video today is because someone asked me to make a video about Graham matrix and his applications in non-Euclidean geometry. And he says he's trying to understand some math behind divergence and curl to compute in the integrals to my electromagnetism 2 lecture. Now, I didn't know for sure whether I could approach this because um, Graham matrix is defined on Wolfram Math World, um, but it's underdefined in my lexicon because I don't know of any um, conventions based on Einstein notation, but I had the feeling that this, when I looked at it, it looked to me like just just a plain outer product of two vectors. Okay, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm finding reliable information on Wikipedia to say what it is. Right here it says the Graham matrix. You're given a set of vectors, um, and you're taking each pair, pair of vectors and calculating a g sub i j. So we've got vector v1, vector v2, vector v3, and g, um, we'd go, I don't even, I'm not even sure what that notation means. Is that a, uh, it sounds like it, it's inner products. So maybe Hermitian matrix of inner products, which would imply that symbol might mean inner product of v1, v sub i, and v sub j. So I feel like this should be row, comma, column. So we'll say the matrix goes i goes this way, j goes this way, um, v v1, 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 v2, v1, v3, v2, v1, v2, 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 v3, v3, v1, v3, v2, v3, v3, and these would all be dot products of each other. So an important application is to compute the linear independence. A set of vectors is linearly independent if and only if the Gram determinant is non-zero. So here's the Gram determinant, which is basically what I was just writing, except with v's instead of x's. And uh, if all of those are, if the determinant of this thing is zero, then it means that these vectors are not linearly independent. For instance, if I have three vectors um, that are describing a two-dimensional space, these are definitely going to be linearly dependent because I'll be able to take v1 plus some or some some factor of v1 like this would be some negative number negative v1 plus v2 to get v3 that's what means that they are linearly dependent because you can take these two and create the third one you don't and so the third one can be 
depend on the first two. So what is divergence? And moreover, what's the difference between divergence and gradient? Let's look at this for a second. Earlier, um, I mentioned that the electric field was expressed in volt, could be expressed in volts per meter. This is kind of an interesting thing because if we just have the volts, we could imagine the volts being um, sort of like a, what is it called, a scalar field. And uh, in fact, the electric field is the gradient of the voltage, which means, and the voltage is, is a V X comma Y comma Z. It's a function of X comma Y comma Z, but it's not a vector field, um, which, so electric field is E sub X has a value of at X comma Y comma Z. E sub Y has a value of X at X comma Y comma Z. And E sub Z has a value at X comma Y comma Z. But the, the potential is defined at a spot at V of X comma Y comma Z. But here's the thing. The electric field is del del X del del Y del del Z of V of X comma Y comma Z, which creates this del 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 X of V of X comma Y comma Z is E sub X of X comma Y comma Z. Del del Y of V is E sub Y. Del del X of V is E sub Z. So when we're looking at del dot E, we're actually looking at del dot del V, which is the divergence of the gradient of the voltage. It's del dot E. So when you do a divergence, it's done on a vector field. And if you're doing a gradient, you do it on a scalar field. Also, when you do a curl, you do that on a vector field. So this is actually del cross del V, I think. But I actually need to um, remember and review some of this. So that might be part of another video, because this one's getting a little bit long right now. So I will bid you farewell. Thanks for watching.